This is going to be a video on my Paul McCartney cassette collection. I'll show you what I have in chronological order and talk a little bit about what I know pertaining to each cassette. The first one I have is Paul McCartney's first solo album, McCartney. These were originally issued on the Capitol label. However, when Paul McCartney switched his contract to Columbia, when the album Tug of War was released, these all reverted to the Columbia pressings. This is what the cassette looks like. And all these Columbia inlay cards, they just feature other albums by the artist on the inside. There's no song credits, lyrics, or anything like that. Also goes for RAM. Some of these cassettes have a barcode here instead of songs that are featured on the cassette. I'm not sure which one is the earliest. I believe these were the earlier pressings. And then when Paul McCartney's catalog reverted back to Capitol, these were released with enhanced sound, I believe. I'm not sure if they were remastered or what the case may be. This does have song credits on the inside, but none of the pictures from the gatefold. This is the first Wings album, Wildlife. This is a promo copy. And then the first credit to Paul McCartney and Wings for two albums. That's how the record was credited. Along with Band on the Run. And with Venus and Mars, we go back to just playing Wings. This has the barcode here. Instead of the featured tracks. And the same for Wings at the Speed of Sound. And then I have the Capitol, I believe this was the original Capitol cassette. And the little opening here, or this, the window that you can see the tape is very small. I've not seen any other cassettes quite like that. This is Wings Over America. It is a double CD. This was the reissue on Capitol. And the inlay card does have songs and credits. And the other side is exactly the same. So it comes in this like fat double cassette holder. This is Wings Greatest on Capitol. And there's nothing on the inlay card. And then back to Columbia for Back to the Egg. The last Wings album. And this does actually have credits. Not many, but more than the other previous Capitol, or I'm sorry, Columbia cassettes did. 
This is McCartney 2. No credits there, but it does have a little bit of a different inlay card. This is Tug of War from 1981. Of course, the printing on the spine here is bigger when you get into the 1980s. And then there's some credits there for each of the songs. This is Pipes of Peace with a different cover somewhat. This is actually what was on the back cover of the vinyl album. And this actually folds out so you have the complete cover. Oh, here's the song lyrics, but on the back, it's the complete album cover. And I'm not sure this, the way the spine is, if this was a reissue or if there were any that had kind of the black red lettering on the cassette spine. And then give my regards to Broad Street, which I just did a video on. I do not have press to play, but I do have the next one, which is the greatest hits, all the best. This is on the clear cassette. Next studio album was Flowers in the Dirt. And it's got some song lyrics and a photograph. And they released two versions of his live album, Tripping the Live Fantastic. There was a double cassette version of the full album, and then this one is The Highlights, which is a one cassette. They did the same for the CD where you could get the condensed version. Then this is the Unplugged album. which I really enjoy this when it came out and I still find it very enjoyable to listen to today. I like the Beatles covers that he did, particularly And I Love Her, I think is a great version. And then this, song, this album tends to marginalize a lot of, uh, or I should say it's very polarizing. I've no Paul McCartney fans who absolutely hate this album and rank it among his worst, but this is some old rock and roll classic covers that Paul put together originally for the Soviet Union market and then it was eventually released in America and Europe, or the rest of Europe I should say. I don't think it's all that bad if you take it for what it is. I mean it's certainly not as strong as solo album, but I don't find it terrible. It's just Paul playing the music that he really loves. 
Then the next true studio album was Off the Ground. And by now, I think most people were buying his stuff on CD, so these cassettes are getting a little harder to come by. And it's kind of weird the way that this whole inlay card is. I'm not seeing any others quite like this. And some of my favorite songs are the ones that he collaborated with Elvis Costello on. That goes for Flowers in the Dirt and also on Off the Ground. This is the live album from that tour, Paul is Live, which of course is the parody of the Abbey Road album cover. Also on the clear cassette. And inside this cassette there is a poster. It's got some photographs, but it also folds out for this. And that's the inside of the actual inlay card, so this is separate. And then one of Paul's strongest albums in years, one of my favorites, is Flaming Pie. And this is actually an import. I'm not sure which country it is from, but it's an actual sticker on here. It's not just printed on. And this was the last album released during Lennon McCartney's Lifetime, last Paul Studio album. And the very last Paul McCartney cassette I have is Driving Rain. Can't tell which way is up or down. Also on the clear cassette. And very thick inlay card. It's almost like an accordion. And that is my Paul McCartney cassette collection. I appreciate you watching and hopefully I will get around to doing my Paul McCartney vinyl and Paul McCartney CD collection. Hope everybody is safe and well and take care.